It's the sound you've waited months to hear. Its images are some of your oldest memories. It's caused some of your greatest triumphs. And your biggest heartbreaks. This is college football. It's tradition, pageantry, and intensity. You can visit every school in the country and never see the same thing twice. It's the option at Georgia Tech, the pistol at Nevada, and the spread no huddle. It's Howard's Rock, the smoke in Miami, and every Saturday, you tap that sign. This is what makes college football special. This is why your school is more than who you root for. It's who you are. The wait is over. College football is here. In 2010, EA released NCAA Football 11, and we received an instant classic. While NCAA 11 may not hold the same prestige as NCAA 14, the last licensed college football game, it was a major step forward for the series back when it released, and it holds up quite well when revisiting it today. This game has the best intro of any college football title easily. For the first time, ESPN presentation was fully utilized. In terms of gameplay, everything felt great, and it's arguably the best playing college football game ever. It does many things better than EA's newest football games, even the graphics looked great, and arguably looked better than later titles, as the lighting and grass just had this cinematic look. Later games had to scale back the dynamic lighting system to open up more resources for new features, making Eleven stand out visually. It's similar to how NBA 2K14 still looks incredible today, especially compared to the next few 2Ks that followed it. NCAA 11 had it all, from depth to gameplay to visuals to presentation, and most of all, the vibes are simply excellent. I often criticize Madden, for example, for lacking atmosphere and for wasting its opportunity to showcase the history and beauty of the sport. NCAA Football 11, a game from 2010, nails it. It was ahead of its time. While NCAA 06 is my personal choice for the best college football game of all time, NCAA 11 wouldn't be a bad choice either. It was truly a classic, and it was arguably a better game than NCAA 14. For a while, NCAA games were usually thought of as Madden skins, with the same gameplay and some texture changes, but with NCAA 11, the game really took a step towards cementing its own legacy. First off, from the intro, it was evident that the dev team went extra hard cooking this up. Compared to Madden 11, this game has a more movie-like style, and feels like a celebration of college football. Tim Tebow was on the cover, shortly after Florida won the national championship, which made this one of the most popular and recognizable NCAA titles ever. The game had a decent amount of depth, and while you can no longer access it today, there was an online browser-based dynasty hub where you could use the Story Builder tool to take screenshots from your games and create your own headlines and news articles about your team. Or if you didn't feel like typing your own, the game would auto-generate some. After playing a few seasons, it becomes an awesome trip down memory lane looking back at your older players and biggest moments. And I think if it was still functional, it would have been a great tool for creators today making NCAA content. Within Dynasty Mode, which is very similar to NCAA 10s, there was a new recruiting process. You get 10 hours a week to spend on talking to prospects, giving you the freedom to budget your time on individual players exactly how you would want to. You can even promise players playing time or promise team success to help negotiate. Instead of recruiting feeling a bit tedious like in previous titles, it was actually fun and rewarding in 11. Road to Glory was also about the same as it was in NCAA 10, which was a major criticism at the time, but it's still a great career mode overall. The highlight of this game is easily the gameplay, however. That is what made this an all-time classic. 
I'm gonna hand the mic over to Just Divine, an underrated YouTuber who makes some great breakdowns and retrospectives on different games. He has a retrospective on this game, NCAA 11 himself, so check that out by clicking the pinned comment down below and subscribe to his channel if you like it. When you look at NCAA 10, look at the running animations. See how robotic they look? They look like they're on a cut together animation and it just looks poor. Especially when you watch enough football to notice when a player is in full stride. But bouncing over to NCAA Football 11, you'll see a change in all of that. I remember there being a YouTube video discussing locomotion in NCAA 11. They showed a side by side comparison in different running animations and honestly, it kind of blew me away. You'll see speedy, elusive, and more agile players separate themselves from the more powerful, slower players. Just look at somebody like Trenton Holiday or De'Anthony Thomas and watch him smoke the boots of a DB who was caught being flat-footed, or a linebacker who he just happened to get the proper angle on. If you go and look at Madden 23, you notice real early on how often blocking assignments get missed. You see guys constantly whiffing, going out too far, allowing a defensive lineman to come through unscathed, and you know, you get the picture. But in NCAA Football 11, the devs added real AI blocking assignments. Stretch, toss, read options, and a bunch more plays. There's a video floating around of them showing the improvement from last year's installment of NCAA, and I, I gotta say, man, it's pretty night and day. Acceleration really meant a lot in NCAA 11. We were often taught that speed meant everything, but never really talked about the key component that accentuates it. You see more speedy players hit that first and second gear to create distance, and then that third one to stay away from defenders. You know how satisfying it was to watch one of your players hit the gap? Perfect blocking, one defender to miss, and he's off to the races. You know how it go. But when you had a more powerful player, they really used their player weight, height, momentum to gauge whether or not the player would get forward progress. But sometimes it wasn't just on the ball carrier. The defense could neutralize forward progress if it was a DT going up against a speedy back. And I mean a beefy DT at that. The game didn't leave it up to dice roll animations. With this logic in full effect, you had to be more cautious with your players and use them more wisely. If you had a power type player, then you would use him to gain some yards out of the contact, or yak for short. Speedy players were good for gaining huge yards with their ability to gain acceleration quicker than the next player. Their agility made them harder to tackle as well as them being elusive. Now, passing was a bit more fluid this year due to the new locomotion system. You could really lead the ball however you wanted to, but of course your QB's rating had to matter. But if you had a more accurate QB, then you can definitely tell the difference from last year. The pocket formation was a bit better due to the real AI blocking assignments, but of course, you know, the pocket will break down over time and start creating pressure immediately. The one thing I would recommend is that if you plan on getting into NCAA Football 11, find a great slider set that can add a new layer of difficulty. Not in the cheesy aspect, but more of the perfectionist standpoint. It's easy to cheese the defense at times, so if you really want to challenge yourself, hop on the internet, maybe Operation Sports or something like that, and find a good sim slider set. The gameplay in this game is fantastic for 2010, but it's not exactly perfect. Like most of EA Sports games, it relies a bit too much on animations rather than physics, but it's still way more fun to play than modern Madden titles. As Just Divine pointed out, the blocking in this game is just incredible. You can follow a pulling guard or a fullback through the hole in a beautiful way. In previous NCAA titles, AI players would immediately run out of bounds after making a catch near the sideline. This was fixed in 11, resulting in much smarter AI and much more challenging games against the CPU. And the presentation of 11 was top notch. Teams like Florida had authentic crowd animations such as the chop, and most teams have their own specific field entrance cutscenes. While the ESPN branding had been used in previous titles, Eleven was the first game where EA fully implemented it throughout all of the menus and in actual gameplay, with authentic camera angles, broadcast packages, announcers, and more. This was also the first NCAA game with Brad Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit, an iconic duo. The commentary felt like you were watching the game on ESPN, and the lighting of the grass and the players was just phenomenal. Games played in rainy weather look better here than in any other college football game. When going back and playing through the NCAA football games, you may actually find Eleven to be the best. Those who grew up on it swear by it, and it's evident why. 
Featuring the best gameplay in the series, as well as incredible presentation, solid depth, and some of the best vibes you could get from a sports game, one could argue that 11 is the definitive college football video game, even more so than 14. While that may be debatable, I think almost everyone can agree that NCAA Football 11 was an all-time classic. Thanks for watching.